Colin had a problem and a microphone to spare. Thomas took it up and so the podcast went to air. For weeks and months they trolled through every single DVD. They've unwrapped all the ones they can and now they're cellulose free. Now they're cellulose free. Hello dear listener and welcome to Cellulose Free. My name is Colin and with me as always is my fellow film watcher, compadre and son and the deranged cat, Thomas. Oh, and I, Coco. I, I am I am not the deranged cat. No. I'm sorry. No, Coco is the deranged cat and you are Thomas. Hi, hello. What have you been up to? Um, not not a whole lot, to be honest. I've been tweeting. That doesn't usually happen, to be honest. I uh, usually what happens on my Twitter is just tweets about this podcast. Yeah. Um, but, but you're I've, famous. I've been tweeting about local government. Yeah. Um, and waiting for Eddie to show up. <laughs> We're we're halfway through the week and Eddie hasn't shown uh, up yet. Eddie the envelope, mm. or envelope, depending on <laughs> where you're Ed, from. Ed, Eddie and his friends, Eddie, 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 and Eddie. Yeah, you know why it hasn't turned up? Because mm-hmm. Eddie's in the space time continuum. What's he doing then there? <laughs> that being said, I did uh, strongly suggest to Thomas that Eddie was. In the mailbox. Oh yeah, knowing yeah. full well that it wasn't. Oh, I, I, I knew full well <laughs> but, that it probably wasn't but either. He still had to go look. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just to to make a mock, mocking, shocked face. It, it was worth back it. to dad from across the yard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So you are now a more recognised. Uh, <laughs> source of knowledge in the Tasmanian uh, political scene. For some value we've recognised. <laughs> uh, at least you were recognised. Yes, yes. I, I made a spreadsheet and I gave it to someone who could use it and he used it and then that went up. With acknowledgement that oh, yes. you had provided a spreadsheet. So Yes. Yes. And this coming term, I'll be making the spreadsheet as I go, instead of all in one lump at the end of the term, because that yes. took a weekend. Did. And I don't want to do that anymore. I want my weekends to not just be tedious data <laughs> entry work. <laughs> because after all, your weekends are so much different from your weekdays. Well, yes, in the weekdays, I wasn't doing tedious data <laughs> entry work, was I? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, yeah, and, and mostly just plans within plans at the moment. Don't uh, know if they'll go anywhere, but... I, I do note that you have put up a cheat sheet mechanism for all of the Tasmanian local councils, except for Madonna Municipal Council. I noticed that was missing... <laughs> Entirely. They don't... They don't have one. They, I, where where you is... Call, you call yourself an expert. Where is Madonna? <laughs> you know where the casino is? Yeah, it's nowhere no, near that. I, I, I know that that much. Yeah. Madonna is in Tasman. It is indeed. I could have even told you that. Um, anything well, else? I, I didn't know exactly where Madonna was until now, but now I do. And it's in Tasman Council. Right. We're going to Madonna this week. Or next <laughs> week, I think. Just so that you can all say... I mean, you have all been through Madonna. All of you have gone to Port Arthur. Yes, so you have yes, all that, been through Madonna. That that does check out. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. I'm just, just waiting for Eddie, making plans, thinking about making presentations. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, some of it, I'll just be able to absolutely rip through. Yeah. And the rest, ooh. oh, <laughs> you're gonna I, rip through. Part of it is that I think I'm going to have to explain why this is important, <laughs> and that that's going to be the really difficult part. It is because it isn't. Just isn't important. 
No, it's Local very important. It's, are... it's very important. <laughs> They're not important at all. We can, we can do without local councils. I should point out that our local municipalities and councils, unlike certain countries, uh, do not have their own sheriff's departments or police departments, uh, things like that. The state provides our policing service, so there's Tasmania Police. They're in different regions and police stations all over the place, but they actually work together. Mm. And you you don't have uh, crossing county lines or anything like that. So. Like, sure, I'm pretty sure we have a Clarence division, but oh yes, it it can do what it wants. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it's called Bill Reeve. Yes. And in fact, yes. there are a number of, in in Clarence. <laughs> the the Clarence division is called Bell Reeve, despite being quite deep into Rosney Park. Yes, yes. Uh, it's tradition. Mm. Anyway, we have rambled on for well and truly long enough. Mm. What have uh, you been up to? What have to? I been up to? Uh, lots of things have happened this week, but I've done very little. Great. I think we'll leave it at that. Great. Because we have a film to watch. We do have a film to watch. We do. What we, are we what? Sorry? When, <laughs> when this yeah. podcast mm-hmm. gets up to 88 episodes, we're going to see some very silly stuff. Are we? Yes. Right, so are you saying that your culling of your list was directed more <laughs> towards, right, <laughs> we're going for silly. No, if, what I'm if saying... If I have to cull, I'm culling everything but the silly stuff. What I'm saying is that this is the 88th episode of Cellulose Free. Right. And we're going to see some very silly stuff. Right. Is is eighty eight a significant number for silliness? Am no, I missing something? No, I'm here? I'm making a Back to the Future reference. Right, a, a that, sideways just, Back to the Future. See, that's, that's what I was completely missing. Right. Yes. Um. A film. <laughs> what are we watching? We are watching, starring Peter Sellers, Peter Sellers, and Peter Sellers, the mouse that roared. What's it all about? What is it all about? According to the blurb on the back of the case. Mm. According to the blurb on the back of the case, which I will only read half of. Good. <laughs> because they they give self-congratulatory praise to Peter Sellers, Peter Sellers, and Peter Sellers. And Peter Sellers? Mm. Okay. In this classic satire, The Duchess, played by Peter Sellers from Dr. Strangelove, and the Prime Minister, Peter Sellers, from The Pink Panther, of the tiny duchy... Duchy? Duchy? Dutch, 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 and... No, that's a, that's a small <laughs> dog. ...of Grant Fenwick have come up with a brilliant plan to keep their country from going broke. Make war on the United States, lose, then collect lots of American post-war aid. Their only mistake is not telling their invasion force leader, Peter Sellers, from The Lady Killers, the Lady Killers. Uh, that he's supposed to lose. Good. And then and an then hilarity we'll stop ensues. There because they give everything away. Yeah. And we're not going to do that. Nope. Even though this film came out in putting him uh, on the f- spot. 59. Good. The, the copyright is 1959, renewed in 1987. I was alive for one of those years, and, and it wasn't the earlier one. <laughs> and layout and design from 2002. Good. Thomas is going to take the disc out of its case. Uh-huh. He's going to put it in the machine. Yep. He's going to wind the machine up. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to wind him up. Mm-hmm. We're going to watch this film and then we'll come back and talk about it. So we shall catch you on the Peter Sellers. Turn to Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers. So what did you think? Uh, I don't think this film is actually particularly good. Wow. (laughs) Wow, that that is... That is a bold statement. It's... 
it's a comedy. Yes. And there are bits of it that I found funny, but I don't find the package as a whole funny. Right. Wow. Wow, I'm 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 sort of reeling by that. Yeah. <laughs> It, it is certainly not a side splitter no. every second of the way or no. even and even most of the time. And it doesn't need to be that. No. It just needs to get more out of me than the occasional chuckle. Uh, well, may, maybe my particular frame of mind for this particular week more needed what this was throwing mm-hmm. at me, and I, I picked it up. So... Perhaps it was a lower bar that it needed to jump over than for you. I still very much have a soft spot for this, and I confess going into it, I wasn't sure whether it was going to serve filling a space in my week particularly well, but it it actually did. I think the audience these days would be particularly narrow for it. Mm Mm-hmm. But I did monitor the 16-year-old son's reactions to it, and he enjoyed it. So you're wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, that's how it works in a democracy, isn't it? (laughs) Uh, um, Two out of three people enjoyed this film. (laughs) <laughs> and that that's an absolute majority. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't know that there's much that's particularly wrong with it, mm-hmm. other than not quite grabbing me, other than at one point in the film, a newspaper appears on screen saying that there is an air raid drill. Yes. But spoilers, by the way, there's an air raid drill. Oh, that, that's, that's the main complication of the film. <laughs> and then we cut to the Queen Elizabeth, where they are talking about the air raid drill and looking at the newspaper to talk about the air raid drill again. Mm-hmm. And then a little later still, the Grand Fenwick army acquire a newspaper, and they also look at the news of the air raid drill that is happening. And everybody is is constantly talking about the air raid drill that is happening. And that's... I don't... I don't think it's particularly good storytelling. (laughs) I suspect, considering it was so much carried by Peter Sellers... Mm Mm-hmm. And the majority of today's audience would really not have any idea about who Peter Sellers was. It's very much a film of its time. Mm-hmm. And so part of the comedic element of him playing so many parts is lost in the fact that, yeah, okay, it's funny enough that all of these parts are being played by the same man. Um, but for a... The time that this came out, it was being played by Peter Sellers, mm-hmm. and uh, so so possibly that chunk of impact is not there. And yes, they spread on some concepts very very thickly, but I thought that the fact that it romped along at a reasonable pace and. Uh, apart from your your pointing out that that I didn't really pick up, so maybe, again, my my frame of mind wasn't um, picking up such things. Um, (laughs) So other than that, I I didn't notice any superfluousness in it, and you definitely did, and Mm. I do not deny now (laughs) that you point that out, that yes, that, that that was spread on thick. And as such... I think you're wrong, and that the pacing is a little off. <laughs> yep, and fair enough. Which, which um, is distressing for what is only an 80-minute long film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one, because I, I don't know how big... I, I would be curious to know how many of our dear listeners have actually heard of this film, let alone seen it. So what we have to say about it is possibly somewhat 
vague. Um, mm. it, it is probably one of the lesser known films in our repertoire of films that we've we've watched. I can probably think of more lesser known ones, but but this this would be fairly down on that that list. So anything that we say about it uh, has a high potential of our dear listener going. I don't know. I can't agree or disagree. Or <laughs> I don't even have a recollection of it because I've never seen it. A few things. Uh-huh. I really did enjoy the atmosphere that they created of the emptiness of New York mm-hmm. on such a low budget. The only things that completely wrecked that was the obvious rear projection of a couple of those mm-hmm. shots. And it was glaringly obvious. Uh, it, was, it wasn't green screen. It was just completely rear projected and, and, and a static you know, of people walking past the, the rear projected backdrop. But for the most part, that scenario of the city being empty was done incredibly well with, with audio and well-timed camera shots. I think there are a couple of still shots that they panned on there, possibly. But for such a bustling, busy city, they portrayed it as being empty very, very well. And I, rep- I appreciated that. You said a few things and then you said one thing. Did I say a few things? Mm. Um, um, I liked the fact that the very first Doctor, as in Doctor Who, was in mm. it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. yeah he, he was reasonable in it. <laughs> <laughs> he was William Hartnell in it. Um, yep. <laughs> Uh, yes. Do you have anything else you wish to say about it? Because, oh, yeah, I, I I did very much go into it with... I just want some mindless mirth today, and I got that. But And, you and didn't. I didn't. <laughs> um, so, yes, do you have anything else you wish <laughs> to, to <laughs> throw into it that we can... Podcasting has slightly ruined my ability to appreciate a film for what it is. <laughs> I vary from week to week. I'm Mm -hmm. terribly variable. Were you looking forward to this? I was. I was looking forward to this. That's harsh then, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting thing to note. uh, Okay, Daniel did poke his head in with the big flashing neon sign saying, I wouldn't mind watching this again. All of the kids were in the room when someone asked me what we were watching. I, oh, I, I bought the disc in, mm-hmm. and Emily looked at it, and somebody else asked, well, what is it? And I, I said, it's The Mouse That Roared. And even though it's been a long time since they've seen it, and have only seen it once, they instantly remembered basically the entire plot line of it, and appeared to have fond memories of it. So it would be interesting to know how well it would go with a second viewing of it for them. Uh, <laughs> I've just looked back at your Facebook posts. Uh, right. And back in 2014, yeah. I said, I was 15 at the time, mm-hmm. uh, that was absolutely ridiculous and I loved it. Uh-huh. It is. And it is it, absolutely ridiculous and... I loved it again. Here, here we are, seven and a half years later. <laughs> yep, yep. I don't know whether the other kids uh, scored uh, it when they, they watched it. They did? They did. All right. Uh, we've got an eight, nine, and an eight here. Uh-huh. How old were they when they... Uh, Thirteen at the time. Okay. okay a few so. years back. I was not disappointed by it. You were. I wasn't. But that being said, it is, uh, that it is not a, an incredibly brilliant film it runs well i think with the premise the 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 confines of the premise that it's got it served me well today but not you no (laughs) anything else you wish to add no okay no well we won't drag that on anymore so we'll move on the following segment needs a little more time in the oven it's done now Dunkle. Hi, Dunkle. Over on YouTube. 
uh, has posted six comments. Wow. Yeah. O- on numerous films? No, only on Battleship. Wow. Mm. Well, th- this is this has me intrigued, dude. <laughs> so, some apologies for the spike in v- viewership analytics around the four and a half minute mark. <laughs> I was sure you had a ship there. Or actually, I was consistently missing that the Brazilian newspaper was not a hypothetical and rewinding to figure out why it was important to access it without being able to read it and its relevance to the English language local blog. Now, (laughs) I remember reading that and registering, ah, I had the aha moment and knew exactly what Duncan was talking about. Do you think I can now? No. No. But you can, can't you? Sort of. (laughs) Good. Good. Translate. (laughs) So the the, the problem is... Yes. ...that once we're done recording, I dump almost everything, and by the time that I've written the marketing post and posted it everywhere that I post it, I have well and truly dumped all memory of the episode. Oh, I see. So... As memory serves me, I recall a telling off from certain podcast co-hosts for dumping images once I thought I was done with them. Um, But, but, oh, I see. Files are different. No, no, I mean, these types of images. Those types of images. Yeah. Well, we could have gone back to it. It would have actually been there we wouldn't have had to remember it because remembering it would have been a problem but this differs from this circumstance how because there is something you can do about that one which is to say not do that okay okay so um please if you can remember brazilian newspapers i remember that I talked about being able to access Brazilian newspapers. Oh, yes, yes. Even though I don't understand Brazilian Portuguese. Ah, that is right. If I wanted to access a British tabloid, I could. That's right. I do not and want I to I was access- going to ask my friend who spoke Brazilian to translate it into Welsh and then from Welsh into English. Mm-hmm. Okay, I may have added those steps, but... So- but- so we have now yes. thoroughly replicated yep. this segment in the previous episode. Good. Okay. Previously. <laughs> Dunkel continues in her second comment. Yes. I would like to not thank Apple for the introduction of an emoji, which are not an emoji. Which I think was related to an untitled segment last week in which I said that the only thing that had appeared on Discord was an emoji of a violin. Yes. Third comment. (laughs) Hi, Dunkle. (laughs) The most challenging movie I've watched with respect to putting names to faces was one about the Mercury Seven. Seven main characters with the same haircut and height, (laughs) and all around very similar by no coincidence. (laughs) All right. It wasn't the right stuff, was it? I don't... I don't know. Don't know either. Number four. Yes? <laughs> I need to keep up with my comment quota before the end of this podcast. <laughs> I won't be offended if you do not read every word aloud in your podcast. Well, uh, <laughs> hey, we, we take what we can get these days. Number five. <laughs> yes? Well, for what it's worth, as someone who is thoroughly removed from Tasmanian municipality politics, (laughs) I thought the blog was done very nicely, and from an angle that is of no consequence to anyone who is just reading the posts, the HTML is much cleaner than I expect to see on a modern website. Wow. The CSS is a mess, though. Yeah, well, we we don't do anything to the CSS. (laughs) I've been tinkering with that thing for ages, and there is absolutely no organisational structure to the style sheet at all. It's just in there, in the order that I thought of things. I'd suggest just changing the high-speed muffler bearings. Statement six. (laughs) Yes, yes, comment number six. So, 
I am presuming that Mighty Mo is referring to the battleship Missouri yes. and not the fictional floating crane from the 1989 miniatures TV show Tugs. Though I do find that amusing to picture. <laughs> yes, Mighty Mo is indeed a nickname for the USS Missouri, which is the battleship that appears quite predominantly in the movie Battleship. And Tugs was a show about boats from the same people who did the miniatures for Thomas, Thomas and the Friends? Tank Engine, yes. Mm. Yes. Less long-lived, I believe. Uh, yeah, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> the puppeteers kept drowning. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, that's morbid. It is, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I, I am impressed that Dunkel has just made a connection with... The mighty battleship, the mighty Mo, the <laughs> USS Missouri, and Thomas the Tank Engine on our podcast indirectly. Indirectly, but but Tank how Engine. many how many podcasts would dare to do that? This is cutting edge stuff, Thomas. It's a shame we're shutting it all down <laughs> soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's all from Dunkel. <laughs> Thank you, Dunkel, for giving some chortles there, deliberate or otherwise. <laughs> Meanwhile, yes. over on Facebook, Helen... Hi, Helen. ...has left three comments. <laughs> wow. Not as many as Dunkel, though. The first comment is a guess. Uh-huh. So this week, I am going with BTLSHP. So, is there a movie called Bottle Shop? <laughs> <laughs> Bacon, tomato and lettuce Salami, ha Ham. jalapenos and pickles Right So pickles, pickles come back again to haunt us But no anchovies No No That, that is a correct guess BTL SHP is indeed a correct guess Well done Helen I think if, if we dared to have a leaderboard Which... Shot us well and truly in the foot the last time we had a genuine competition. I would suggest that you're possibly leading it at the moment. Mm. But I would not dare to go back and actually count. But I think you are. I would go back and count, but I have things going on, which is weird. Un unfortunate. Weird and unfortunate, yes. 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 Comment number two. <laughs> mm hmm. Also, apparently, battle.ship.movie is a legitimate <laughs> what free words address. Now, I have a bone to pick <laughs> with what free words. Uh, a lot of people have a bone to pick with what three words. First of all, yes. proprietary system. Yes. Completely opaque yeah. and not actually usable by anyone, really. Which is compounded by the fact that it's not... A particularly useful system anyway, because coordinates are all confu easily confusable with each other. Uh, so, you, you said, uh, is there a movie called Bottle Shop? Well, probably, but there is also a what free words address called bottle.shop.movie. <laughs> <laughs> and bottle.ship.movie. And battle.shop.movie. I, I certainly... Also went on to what three words and tried a couple of combinations there myself and then went down a rabbit hole. I, I, I've certainly dealt with it many times before and there is actually a, a um, the proprietary uh, lock on the system is a big downer and the fact that it's still relying on an understanding of the English language. Mm-hmm. So they tout the usefulness of being able to call emergency services and say what your what three words are. <laughs> Phone lines aren't that good. <laughs> and pronunciations and, and then having to spell out words because the person can't understand how you're pronouncing a word. Um, if you are somewhere that you can 
access the what free word system. <laughs> exactly. You are probably at an address that you can tell emergency services in the normal fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, dear! But we digress. We do digress. Uh, it was amusing that uh, <laughs> Battle Dot Ship Dot Movie uh, is actually a what three words coordinates, and I did check out where it was and tried to work out how far it was from a uh, naval base, and it wasn't <laughs> actually that far, <laughs> but it was inland. Anyway. <laughs> Comment number three. Yes. And our last comment on this episode. Oh, thank goodness for... No. (laughs) Also, also, I wish I had several million dollars down the back of the couch. Half protons might be awkward, though. (laughs) Half protons? Yeah, look, you know. what, What point is there to splitting atoms if not to make half protons? Anyway... Thank you, dear listener, Helen, and uh, thank you, dear listener, Dunkel, for those comments. Much appreciated. And also thanks to... M, who hasn't really commented on this particular podcast, and that's okay. No one is under any obligation to do so. Thanks, M, for the likes, too. And that's it for this segment. It is. So we're going to move on. Yes, yes we are. Pick a film. For next week. So we can. Go to bed. And it's your turn. It, it is. It is my turn. And I, I, I am curious again as to which refined lots of mirth and merriment film <laughs> will, will come up this time. Because I, unlike you, have not looked at your list. Boy, did my attempt at a reference backfire. <laughs> uh, not not making a choice here. He's not going to make I, a choice. Well, I am making a choice, but that choice is to leave my choice in the hands of whatever random algorithm uh, my movies is powered by. It's gravity. Okay. <laughs> and he's well, just discovered that this isn't a film filled with the... mirth and merriment. No, it is. It is. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not really gravity per se. The accelerometer does measure gravity, but it sort of filters it out. Right. Okay. So, that, so that it's only picking up movement relative to the Earth. Uh-huh. Okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. this film is from 1969. Wow. Mm-hmm. A- and it is a comedy? It is a comedy. Does it star Barbara Streisand? That is a good question. I'm looking over this list. I am not seeing Barbara Streisand. Okay, then. <laughs> oh, the only reason I say that is because when you mentioned the possibility that your refined list may contain lots of mirth <laughs> and merriment, a certain Barbara Streisand movie sprang to mind. But I, the, the date doesn't sound quite right, but, but roughly... Right. Anyway, I'll let you go on. 69. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. It is a comedy. It's also an action movie. Uh Uh-huh. It is also a crime movie. Right. This particular release of the film is from 2004, so it has the old... Uh, uh, The old classification markings on it. Has this film been remade? This film has been remade. Okay. Would this film contain a certain iconic model of vehicle? Yes, it would. Herbie Goes Bananas. No. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> Herbie Goes Bananas. Yes, yes. Not, well, not the love of, bug. No, because that didn't come out in 1969. <laughs> I don't know when Herbie Goes, goes Bananas. <laughs> See, now I have to look this up. Uh, I'm a bit you, manic again. You have successfully <laughs> derailed the podcast. No, you are 11 years off. <laughs> <laughs> the very first Herbie film. Yes. I think you're too early for. <laughs> no. No, The Love Bug was from 1968, and then they oh. didn't make another one for a decade. Wow. Wow. 
Would this film star Michael Caine? This film does star Michael Caine. It's Muppet Christmas Carol. (laughs) What year did Muppet Christmas Carol come out? 92. Way off. Does it involve a heist? It does involve a heist. Ah, the great Muppet Caper. Does does that one have Michael Caine in it? Oh, dear. Would this be the famous British comedy action (laughs) crime movie the italian job this is the italian job right we got there eventually (laughs) and what a fun old romp it was getting there Mm. would you please tell our dear listener what the italian job is all about charlie croker is out of jail and on the make with an ingenious plan for the heist of the century Aided and abetted by top criminal mastermind Mr. Bridger, Charlie sets off with an ace team of villains and three very special minis to lift four million dollars from under the noses of the Turin Polizie. I I have a problem with this. On the one Mm. hand, you've said Turin. On the other hand, you've used the Italian word for police. (laughs) Pick one. (laughs) Turin, the English word for Torino. And polizie, the Italian word for police. Yeah, yeah. The trouble is, with the cops and the mafia on his tail, Charlie finds that grabbing the money is kid's stuff compared to getting away with it. Ah, The Italian Job. A film that I first watched on New Year's Eve after or before seeing Dinner for One and the comedy with the bolero on SBS. Oh. It was one of those. It was either before or after or possibly both. (laughs) Oh, right. These were all on SBS, were they? No, no. (laughs) <laughs> we, we watched The Italian Job on DVD. Right. Either before or after or sandwiched in between this... Dinner for One and the comedy about the snare player in Bolero. Because uh... SBS were playing those on New yes, Year's Eve. <laughs> yes, as they traditionally do, certainly the... Uh, Dinner for One, Dinner for yes. One, but I, yes, I'm not entirely sure of the, the snare player. Anyway... The 1969 original Italian job next week. We hope you can join us. But until then, we'll catch you next time. Bye. You have been listening to Cellulose Free. Your hosts were Colin, who produces and edits the show, and Thomas, who makes the artwork and music. Cellulose Free is recorded in the Deranged Cat Studios in scenic Tasmania, Australia. We keep track of our extensive physical media collection through My Movies, which we highly recommend. You can find links to that, as well as other places you can find us in the show notes. Cellulose Free is a Hi Hello production. Um, video on YouTube where um, one of the members of the BBC Symphony Orchestra takes you through a bunch of um, percussion instruments and then at the end does an all percussion version of Ravel's bolero. Oh, good grief. Mm. Does he use looping or 
or, I, or, or I feel like there was some I looping can't involved. Imagine him playing it all. Um, no, he, not, he not run out of hands. No, not at the same time. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> All, all the instruments were recorded separately. <laughs> uh, th- this was during the pandemic. You are going to have to send me a link. Mm. Yeah, I will. Okay. I I am actively sending you this link now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm stopping recording. G- good. <laughs> if you don't have any audio... Yeah. You don't have a podcast. What you have is an empty audio file, and that no nobody really wants that. Not not an empty audio file. No. 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 Make editing easy though. It would. It would. Still, some choices to be made though. How how long do you want your empty audio file to be? <laughs> I, I'd just trim out all the. Silent bits. Oh, yes. okay. So we're going for minimum size. Want the the shortest file name you can get out of it. Just yeah. really, really bring down the bits. That'd be the opening music, the closing music, and then a blank blooper. Right. Yeah. A finely like, crafted blank blooper. Which obviously any. Any dead air would be No, 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 it would be specific. I would actually go back a couple of episodes and get the recording of you doing air quotes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like this. No, there was noise. Yeah, because my tablet fell over. Yeah. Because it doesn't... I want there to be magnets here and here so that it clicks... But it doesn't have magnets here. I thought it here. did. So it just. That one. <sighs> uh, uh, uh.